Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. I am Tommy the Hack. Today, I will be presenting the article Electron Transfer Coupling in Microbial Fuel Cells. Performance of Fuel Cells Containing Selected Microorganism Mediator Substrate Combinations. Before starting my presentation, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for amazing content and click the bell icon for timely updates on our channel. The contents of my presentation include Introduction Materials and Methods Results and Discussion Potentiometric Observations Fuel Cell Performance Behavior of Fuel Cells Columbic Yields Conclusion a variety of microorganism mediator combinations has been undertaken to identify the most effective combination. Several of the redox agents worked well as mediators, maintaining steady currents over several hours. A number of the compounds tested did not function well. Proteus vulgaris, with thionine as mediator and glucose as substrate, showed the best performance. This system has examined various conditions to establish the effects of organism concentration, mediator concentration, and substrate addition. Coulombic outputs from these cells were calculated by integration of the current time plots. The following microorganisms were obtained from the culture collection that were prepared previously. They are Alcaligenes eutrophus bacillus subtilis Escherichia coli proteus vulgaris. Now we are going to discuss about the assembly of the microbial fuel cell. The fuel cells were constructed from polymeth acrylate plastic and had electrode compartments. They were designed having terminal sections as single half cells but with intermediate half cells bonded together back to back. The two compartments were separated by a permeable ion exchange membrane, sealed between thick silicone rubber gaskets. The anodes were made of reticulated vitreous carbon platinum wire connectors were bonded to the RVC electrodes with electrically conducting carbon cement bright platinum foil was used for the cathodes. Contact between the electrodes and the ion exchange membrane was prevented by thin paper spacers. Here is the list of chemicals that were used in the experiment. The chemicals were all standard grade and were used without further purification. Table 1 gives list of abbreviated names of these mediators as used throughout this presentation. Now I would like to discuss about the procedure for electrochemical measurements. In the case of potentiometric measurements, measurement of the anodic electrode potentials with and without mediators were carried out in an H-type cell. In the case of fuel cell measurement, up to 10 fuel cell units were assembled. The anode and cathode compartments were filled with phosphate buffer and ferrocyanide. Now let us move on to the fuel cell measurement. Freshly prepared microorganisms were added to the anode compartments. The fuel cells were placed in a water bath. They were allowed to reach thermal equilibrium over a period of one hour. During this time oxygen-free nitrogen was bubbled through both electrode anode compartment. The mediator solutions were then added to each anode compartment. The rise of cell voltage was recorded. When the voltage had reached a stable value and substrate was added to the anode compartments measurement was done. Current time curves were obtained from the time dependence of the cell voltage. Voltage readings were made automatically by a microprocessor controlled digital voltmeter. The Coulombic outputs were determined by graphical integration of the areas under current time curves. Result and discussion. The measurements described were made for short time periods during which current voltage characteristics were a reflection of the discharge of the reduced mediator reservoir. Current voltage curves for fuel cells containing alkaligenes eutrophus and proteus vulgaris with thionine as mediator. Here blank circle represents proteus vulgaris with thionine and glucose added initially. Filled circle, triangle and square represents alkaligenes eutrophus with thionine sodium succinate added initially. Current time curves for fuel cells containing various mediators and proteus vulgaris under a fixed load are shown in figure 3. 
It shows the variation of current output with time for fuel cells containing Proteus vulgaris and different mediators. Figure 4 shows current time curves for fuel cells containing Proteus vulgaris, Escherichia coli and Bacillus subtilis with thionine as mediator. It shows the variation of current output with time for fuel cells containing different microorganisms and thionine with or without glucose as substrate. Open symbols represents no added glucose, closed symbols denotes 10 micro mole added glucose. Open and closed circle shows Proteus vulgaris open and closed triangle represents Bacillus subtilis open and closed square represents Escherichia coli 560 ohm of external load was applied. Let us look at the effect of microorganism concentration on current output. In the figure we can see effect of organism concentration on the current output of fuel cells containing Proteus vulgaris and thionine mediator concentration. As for the effect of thionine concentration on current output, figure 7 shows the effect of varying the thionine concentration on the current output from a fuel cell containing Proteus vulgaris under resistive loads of 560 and 100 ohm. Coulombic yields for the oxidation of 10 micro mole of glucose in fuel cells containing Proteus vulgaris were calculated for a range of conditions as shown in. Figure 8 shows effect of glucose concentration on current output with time of fuel cells containing Proteus vulgaris dotted line represents no added glucose. Blank circle denotes 5 micromole initial added glucose. Filled circle shows current output for 10 micromole initial added glucose. For this procedure external load of 560 ohm was applied. A variety of microorganism mediator combinations has been undertaken to identify the most effective combination in microbial fuel cells. Proteus vulgaris in combination with thionine was very effective mediator and was adequate for the experiments but it is not sufficiently stable for long-term use. The mechanism of electron transfer to mediators by microorganisms remains incompletely understood and requires further investigation. Understanding the mechanisms of microorganism mediator interactions would allow a more systematic development of efficient combinations. Maximizing fuel cell performance depends on geometry of cell design. The choice of a suitable cathode reaction and the long-term stability of microbial activity. The results presented here indicate a real prospect for the development of microbial fuel cells.